Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Two Sats. My name is CJK, and today we're going to talk about interest rates and the economy. Today is the day we find out whether interest rates go down by 25 basis points or 50 basis points. That's right. The whole world will sit on the edge of their seats as a group of men dictates the price of money. Forget about free market supply demand price discovery. Humans can do it better. Well, putting that aside, it is interesting to look at the data because the Fed is data dependent. And when you look at government CPI and government real GDP, CPI is coming back down to its 2% target and real GDP is positive, signaling economic growth. Where is the signal that we should be lowering interest rates? I thought we lower interest rates to support the economy, but we have a strong economy. We see the strong economy articles all in the mainstream news. Interestingly, before uh, the Great Recession, there were strong economy news articles being written even in mid and even late 2008, but it was in late, late 2008 that it was officially announced that in December of 2007, we had entered into a recession. You can check it on my Twitter, the, the great revision in my highlights to get a more accurate portrayal of where the data shows we truly are. What we're going to start with is unemployment. You can see when unemployment is above the midline, we are in a weak economy. People are losing their jobs. When unemployment is below the midline, people are getting jobs. Unemployment is going down. We have a strong economy. And this is a zoomed in view. Pay attention to where this really started signaling where the economy was starting to weaken right in the end of 2022 and beginning of 2023. But we are clearly above the midline and the data is showing us that the economy is weakening. It's not crashing. There's not an economic emergency, but we are weakening, not strengthening. And that actually supports a rate cut rather than rates higher for longer, like government CPI and real GDP would signal. And this is the SOM rule. So this is the rate of change in the unemployment rate. You can see that we broke above a key critical level uh, and that that trigger alerts us to the fact that we're entering into a period where the economy is weakening. And typically, historically, every single time that happens, we move into a recession. So that, again, supports that interest rates should be lowered to support the economy. When we take a look at manufacturing, uh, again, in late 2022, 2023, manufacturing is below the midline. Uh, signaling that we are contracting rather than growing. Uh, another data point that says that we should be cutting interest rates. Uh, and just a few more uh, extra data points that aren't really that uh, widely looked at. Uh, here's the credit card delinquencies going up, auto loans rising up a little bit. Uh, and then this is people just eating out at dinner. You can see that we are lower than we have been except for the Great Recession and for COVID. Uh, and that's a sign that people don't have savings. They don't have uh, money to spend. There's discretionary spending is dropping off. The economy is slowing down. So I just find it really interesting that when you look a little bit deeper into the economy, uh, all of a sudden it starts to make sense that we should be cutting interest rates, that the demand destruction campaign that the Fed started back in March of 2022 has been highly successful. The economy has been had a, a boot put down on its throat. Uh, and now we need to release that boot off of the throat. And it's of my opinion that if the rise in interest rates did not increase the government's net interest expenditures and uh, turning the cost of interest payments from uh, an unknown uh, cost into the number two largest budget cost in the United States above Medicare and below Social Security, then we would have outright deflation. The demand destruction campaign was so aggressive that we would be experiencing deflationary prices, except for the fact that government expenditures and deficit spending actually increased over that same time period. Therefore, those inflationary positive price pressures were offsetting the deflationary price pressures from the demand destruction campaign, resulting in the disinflation that we have right now. In other words, uh, inflation coming down, but not going negative so that prices are still growing, but at a slower rate. But those prices are not growing because of a strong economy. Those prices are growing because of a weaker dollar. So all of these things come together to kind of reveal that government CPI and government GDP are telling us that rates should stay higher for longer. Gold at all time highs is saying rates should go even higher. But at the same time, when we look deeper into the economy, we're starting to realize Whoa, we took the fight to the economy. We went with a demand destruction campaign. Perhaps we should have directed our energy towards the currency instead of the economy. 
perhaps we should have directed our attention at government spending and slowed down the pace of the issuance of new dollars in order to to have those inflationary price pressures decrease and uh, lowering overall prices. That way, more people could afford to increase their standard of living and quality of life.